Alright, what is up everybody? We are back with another edition of Everyday Hoops. Hope you guys are having a good one. Today, we're going to be recapping last night, the second day of the NBA Cup. Some more exciting and great basketball that we got yesterday. We're recapping all the moments, all the games here in today's video. Thank you guys for the views on the videos and the shorts recently. I really appreciate it. If you do like the content around here, consider subscribing, like, turn notifications, do all stuff like that. I'd really appreciate it. It really helps out a lot. Uh, enjoy the membership. If you want to learn more about the membership, there's a video on my channel explaining all of you. can go back and watch that. Links to my Twitter, all that stuff down in the description below. And uh, yeah, don't waste any more of your time. Let's get right into it. Also, I forgot to say it in the little opener there, but we are very, very close to 800 subscribers. So hitting the subscribe button would mean a whole lot. We're very close to 800. Let's get to there very soon. But we'll start the first game. Heat and Pacers. Uh, the Heat end up getting this win 124 to 111. They are five and six. The Pacers fall to five and seven for the Heat. The second and third quarter really put the gap. You know, Miami outscored Indiana 35 to 26 in the second quarter. Everybody got involved. Jovic had nine points and three rebounds and shot four for four from the field in 10 minutes in the second quarter. Tyler Hero had seven points. Uh, Jaime Akes and Doug Robson both had five. In the third quarter, Kevin Love. Kevin Love dropped 15 points, hit three threes in the third quarter, while Bam also had 11 in the quarter. And the he ended up getting a W. Bam, what an amazing game. 30-11-7 with five steals. He shot 10 for 17, hit two three-pointers. Just this is the typical Bam we're used to seeing. You know, we know Bam has not had a great season this year. But, you know, this is a big game for him. You know, he was getting into the mid-range area. The three ball was falling. The shot was falling. He looked a lot more comfortable on the offensive end. You know, looked a lot more involved, a lot more integrated, and looked a lot more like the band that we're used to seeing. Uh, Tyler Hero gave you 20 and 5 assists. Kevin Lowe was huge, 15 points in this game with 7 rebounds, 4 steals as well. Uh, Hayward Highsmith had 14 points. He was 6 for 6. Uh, the bench, Jovic and Jami Akez, both were really good off the bench. Jovic gave you 11. Hakez gave you 10. The team shot 51% for the field, 35% from 3. Uh, Got to the free throw line 23 times, while Indiana got to the free throw line only 11 times. So they got 10 more points in the free throw line uh, Get Miami, which is big. They also forced 20 Indiana turnovers in this game. And this is more of the typical Miami Heat team we're used to seeing, you know, where Bam is doing everything. You know, they have multiple players getting involved, six players in double figures, and the defense. You know, this is the more of the typical Miami Heat that we're used to seeing. Indiana, another tough game. Tyrese gave you 18-8. and eight. Pascal had 14. Obi Taba gave you 21 off the bench. You know, um... TJ McConnell at 14, Joyce Walker at 11, but yeah, tough shooting day for betting. Matthew is 4 for 11. Uh, Miles Turner was 3 for 7. Again, 20 turnovers. Got dominated at the free throw line. And Indiana, I don't know. It just feels like they're going back and forth this year. I feel like it's been a very streaky season for Indiana so far. Like, I feel like they had tough, but tough, then they had a couple games in a row. I was like, okay, here's here comes Indiana. But then the last couple games have been kind of like, uh, okay, what's going to happen? It's been very like back and forth. I feel like they're going to have one really good game where you're like, okay, this is the Indiana Pacers we're used to seeing. And the next game, it just looks really different. Next game, they just can't score. The defense, we know what the defense is like. And it's like, man, what's what's going to happen here? You know, um, the st all the starters for Indiana were in the negative 20s. Uh, Miles Turner, negative 29. In this game, well, the bench was all positive. You know, so that was a big indicator. The Miami starters are just outplaying the Indiana starters. And a tough loss for Indiana, but the Heat get a much-needed victory. You know, get to 5-6. and six. They're still one game by their 500. But... Looking at the standings, they're still, I mean, they're 5-6, and six, but the 6th seed because the Eastern Conference right now. Yeah, very tough loss for Indiana. Just looked, again, that second and third quarter, Miami really bridged the gap there. And Indiana just hasn't really looked, you know, they've been very inconsistent this season. Next, we go to Sixers Magic. Magic ended up winning this game 98-86. to 86. They are 8-6 and six on a 5-game win streak, while Philly drops to 2-10. and 10. The Magic, great game in this one for them. Uh, they've been rolling the last couple games. They're on a five-game win streak currently. They're sitting at third place in the East, so the third team to get above 500 in the Eastern Conference. And they've been playing some really good ball, not just offensively, but defensively. They've been great. Uh, look at their last five games. They've held. They've had a on this five-game winning streak. Every game they've held opponents to under 100 points in this win streak. Uh, I guess New Orleans 88 points, Washington 94 points, Charlotte 89 points, Indiana 90 points, and in Philadelphia 86 points. So they're on a streak, five games in a row, under 100 points. Now it's going to get a little bit tougher. Their next couple games, they've had kind of an easier schedule for the last few games. But at this point, wins are wins, especially without Paulo Boncaro. You need any win you can get, and the Magic have been rolling. Franz Wagner has been amazing for those last couple games. I did my video yesterday talking about six players that are having underrated seasons, and Franz Wagner is on that list because Franz has having an all-star type of season. 
I said in that video, like, if Paolo doesn't qualify to be an all-star because of the game's missed or anything, Franz can slide right in there and be that all-star for the Magic. Uh, last night, 31-11-6, plus 18, shot 10 for 23, hit five threes. Just incredible. Not only his scoring is, but his defense and his playmaking. He's been leading the team in assists. Uh, Jalen Suggs gave you 19-7, 14 for Mo Wagner, 11-9 for Jonathan Isaac. He had a good game. Um, yeah, the Sixers, the team, they just dominated the defensive end. I mean, they held the Sixers to 40% shooting. They shot 32% from three in this one. They won. Um, Magic won the rebounding battle 43-34, to including 11 offensive rebounds. They forced, well, they had the same amount of turnovers, but still forcing 18 turnovers. And just was a great game, great all-around team performance. They've really all been stepping up. You know, not only Franz, but Jalen Suggs has been good. The bench has been giving some good minutes with Mo Wagner, John Isaac, Anthony Black is doing some things. Uh, Tristan De Silva stepped in really solid as a starter. Goku Badase has been playing really good. Didn't have a great game yesterday, but throughout this win streak, he's been really good in terms of rebounding, um, being a good big man. So it's just everybody's been stepping up. They've really kind of found their groove now without Paulo. And it's like, all right, we're going to be, we're just going to lock in the defensive end. You know, if we can't score, you're not going to be able to score either. And that it's been working for them. So a great win for the Magic. For the Sixers, uh, it's been really, really tough. Uh, Paul George and Joel Embiid combined to shoot 9 for 30 from the field, 3 for 16 from 3. Uh, just, yeah, Joel gave you 20 and 8, had 6 turnovers, shot 5 for 15, 0 for 5 from 3. It's just been really rough for Joel the first two games, which you kind of expect, obviously. I mean, he hasn't played in a while. And coming off that injury, it, it's tough, but Joel has been really tough. But Paul George also has been struggling so far this season as well. He hasn't really got been able to find his shot, get it going. Uh, so far, he's shooting 39% for the field, 31% from 3. Averaging only 16 points per game in 30 minutes. Um, obviously, it's going to get better. So I don't expect it to be like this the entire season. But it's just, they're, the figures are struggling right now, and they really need a big performance from one of those two guys, and they just haven't been able to give them from them. But they have been getting it from Jared McCain. Jared McCain has been awesome the last couple games. Last night, gave me 29 points, shot 10 for 17, 5 for 10 from 3. He just looks so confident and comfortable out there as a rookie. I mean, we know what his shooting was like. You know, he was a really good shooter at Duke. But it's been more than just him catching shoot threes. Like, it's been him putting the ball on the floor, not being afraid to attack players, go one-on-one, -on -one, get to the basket, do some up-and-unders, confident in pulling up from the mid-range area, even playmaking. Like, he hasn't been afraid to make that extra pass or make the extra play. Like, he just looks so confident out there as a rookie. Like, the, these last couple games have been absolutely amazing. I mean, he's had 20 or more in, what, like, five straight games. He has been amazing for the 76ers so the Sixers really got a gem there and remember you can go back and watch my draft stuff I was saying I this might be the best pick in the draft Jared McCain to the 76ers I said that I said this might be the best pick or one of my favorite picks of the draft was Jared McCain to the Sixers and I said he was gonna fit there but I didn't expect this I didn't I thought he was gonna be just a really good complimentary player good catch and shoot guy good guy that you know can get minutes and maybe be in the rotation as a rookie I didn't expect him to be their one of their better players this year I didn't expect him to be their best player in the last couple games. Like, I did not expect that. But it's been super, super fun to watch Jeremy McCain do that. But besides that, the Sixers just look pretty bad right now. They look kind of out of sorts. Like, Joel has not been dominant in this two games. Paul George has had a really tough start to the season. The role players have been kind of very on and off. You know, like, Caleb Martin hasn't really been that great. Kelly Oubre has his games here and there. Eric Gordon is older. Andre Drummond only got three minutes last night. Like, it's just, it's really, really tough out there for the 76ers right now. They're going to have to, they're, they, it's going to start with their two guard, the two guys, Paul George and Joel Embiid, really stepping up and having some big performances. But overall right now, things just do not look great in Philly. Next, we go to Pistons and Raptors. The Pistons win this game 99-95. to They're 6-8. and eight. Toronto falls to 2-11. and 11. The fourth quarter, Detroit outscores Toronto 26-17 in the fourth quarter. Uh, the Raptors, that's been kind of like this MO for the Raptors the last couple games. Or a lot of their close games this year. Is the Raptors have a really good first few quarters, but in the fourth quarter they just can't think, get things to go. And that's also because, of course, not having Scotty Barnes, not having a true star. In the fourth quarter, that's where you give your best guys the ball, and you're like, all right, go win this game for us. And Toronto doesn't really have that. I mean, RJ's been really good this year. Grady Dick's been really good. But they just haven't been able to perform or produce in the clutch. They're not there yet, you know, which is okay. Uh, Grady Dick went 0 for 5 in the fourth quarter. He had a really nice looking three that could have tied the game. That one dribble, you know, pull up that Forchi just missed. It was a good shot, just missed. But that's really been the MO for the Raptors. It's just the fourth quarter. They cannot really 
you know, get things going, which Detroit was giving it to him. Detroit, Detroit I think, what, Jaden Ivey and Jalen Duren both missed free throws. Cade almost had a turnover in this fourth when they got the got a rebound. Like, it, it was tough, but the Pistons end up closing out the game. Uh, they get the win. Malik Beasley gives you 20 points and four threes. Cade, even though he had a tough shooting night, 6 for 21, gave you 15, 6, and 10. Jaden Ivey had 14, even though, again, he also had a rough shooting night. Had 7 points in the fourth quarter. I'm sorry, no, had three points, hit three free throws. Sorry, Malik Beasley was the one that had seven in the quarter, but Jay and Ivy hit three free, big free throws to close out this game. Jalen Duran gave you 12 and 8. Tobias gave you 11 and 11. Uh, 10 for Ron Holland off the bench with eight rebounds, three steals. Uh, it was a really tough shooting day for both teams. Detroit shot 50, 41%. Toronto shot 36%. Both teams only hit eight three pointers. Uh, the free throws, Toronto actually won the free throw battle, uh, but. Detroit wins the rebounding battle, 56-53. to 53. They win the assist battle. They also win the turnover battle. So they won the little margins. And, you know, when they hit, when they needed their free throws or needed some things to go, Detroit was the team that got it to go their favor. You know, for Toronto, uh, Jakob Porto gave you 25-18 and 18 with three blocks. RJ had 22-6-7. and seven. 16 for Grady Dick, even though he had a tough shooting night, 4-17. for 17. It was 1-10 for 10 from 3. Um, so, yeah, this is a close game, but... The Pistons end up closing it out, getting a win. They're six and eight, and they, they've been playing some solid basketball. You know, they've I think they've what played six games in a row, where it's come down to the last couple of possessions. So, you know, they they've been really you know getting a lot of they been getting a lot of experience in terms of learning how to close out games. They haven't done it to all of them, but they did it last night. Got a win, which is big. And I think they're what two and zero now in the in season tournament. I think they're two and zero in the NBA Cup. So, and and I don't think it's crazy that Detroit wins that group. I mean, Detroit, that group isn't like a star-studded type of group. I even said it before. Like, I didn't say it on here, but I was in my head. I was like, looking at the groups, I was like, hey, Detroit? Am I crazy for thinking Detroit can win this group? Like, they have a realistic shot at it, and so far they're 2-0 right now. So, they've been playing some solid ball. Uh, They're 6-8. They've really stepped it up from the beginning of the season when they started, what, 1-5? They've been really stepping it up. They've won a couple games, won a couple close games, had some good performances, and they're really starting. Things are starting to turn around slowly there in Detroit. Next, we go to Wizards Hawks. Hawks end up winning this game 129 117. They go to 6 and 7. Washington falls to 2 and 9. They're on a seven game losing streak. The second quarter really is where things start to unravel for Washington because Washington put up 39 in the first quarter. I mean, Kyle Kuzma and Jordan Poole combined for 25 points in the first quarter, almost outscored the entire Atlanta team. But the second quarter, that's when things started to fall apart. Atlanta put up 30 in the second quarter. Washington put up 11. Washington was 5 for 30, 1 for 11 from 3 in the second quarter. Um, Atlanta, Jalen Johnson gave you 8, 2, and 3. Dyson Daniels has 6 points. Uh, Yaka Kongu had 5 off the bench. And Washington just could not get anything to go. And from then on, the third quarter kind of sealed it. And they just went on for the rest of the game. Atlanta ends up getting a W. Um, Dyson Daniels on another amazing performance. 25, 4, 6 steals, 2 blocks, shot 10 for 14. He has been incredible this year. He has been absolutely incredible. I think he's had, what, six or more steals in each of the past four games or something something crazy. He's averaging over, over three steals per game. He's in the league in deflections. I saw a thing, I think NBA Central said, Dustin Daniels is on pace for 600 def- deflections this year, and the NBA record is 300. So that just shows you how crazy Dustin Daniels is having of a season. He's really emerged as a MIP candidate, maybe a sneaky DPOY, all-defensive team. I mean, definitely an all-defensive team lock right now. You know, he's just getting so many steals. His hands are everywhere, man. He just gets the hand on the ball every possession. He's going to come down and get a hand on the ball, even if it's not a steal. A deflection or something is going to happen when Dyson Daniels is out there. Like, he just is a menace on the defensive end. And offensively, he's really taking a step. I mean, you saw it last night. A lot of times he was putting the ball on the floor, getting to the basket. Three ball, he's been shooting the ball confidently, even if it's not going all the time. He's been shooting the three ball very confidently. And he just looks like a, he's looked like he's really emerged and the Hawks are really giving him this amazing opportunity because in New Orleans he shows some things here and there but New Orleans has so many talent with you know CJ they brought in they had um um oh my god I'm blinking Herb Jones Jose Alvarado they drafted Jordan Hart like they had just so many players kind of in his position that it was really hard for Dyson to really get you know a full-on opportunity like he does now in Atlanta and so he has really benefited from this trade um, and he has been really good. Jalen Johnson give you 18, 13, 7, and 4 blocks. He's been great. Trey give you 18 and 9. Uh, another tough shooting performance, but they didn't really need it. DeAndre Hunter at 22. He had a really nice second half. Uh, Yucca give you eight, 13 and 13. 11 for Zachary Versace. 10 and 13 for Clint Capella. Garrison Matthews even had 12 points. Like Everything was just on fire for Atlanta. From the second quarter on, Atlanta really ran the show. 
Uh, and then for Washington, Kuzma gave you 24. Alex Saar has some moments. 20 and 7, 4 steals, 3 blocks, shot 7 for 13. 3 for 4 from 3. The shots were falling. So that was nice. Jordan Poole gave you 22, 5 and 5. You know, but just, yeah. The Wizards are bad. I mean, there's not much more to say. The Wizards are bad, but they're supposed to be bad. And Atlanta, just a really nice win. And Dyson Daniels is looking great. Next, we have the Bulls and the Cavs. The Cavs win this one 144. 126. They are 14 and 0. The sixth team in NBA history to start 14 and 0. Chicago drops to 5 and 8. Uh, the Cavs. I mean, this was a shootout in the entire game. Cleveland put up 49 points. Cleveland only missed three shots in the first quarter. All of them were threes, by the way. Only missed three threes in the quarter. That's it. They put up 49 points. A franchise record. Garland had 15 and 6. Jared Allen, Don Mitchell each had 11. It was just. It was all. It, it was just fire away. Second quarter, the Bulls actually won the second quarter, 39 to 28. They hit six three pointers. The Bulls hit 13 threes in the first half, shot 58%. It's just that Cleveland hit 11 threes and shot 65%. And so it was really a shootout. Third quarter came back down to earth a little bit, you know, and then we get to the fourth. And that's when Cleveland puts it on. Davin Mitchell puts up 18 points in the fourth quarter. The Cavs, a Cavalanche happens late in this quarter where it was like a, you know, like a six point. Like it was a really close game, and Cleveland just took over. And the defense started kicking. Davin Mitchell was on fire. Karis Avert had a big fourth quarter, and they just ran the score up because, of course, you know, NCAA tournament or NBA Cup, sorry, NBA Cup, you know, it's not just, it's not just, you know, winning. You have to also have to have the point differential, and that's why Cleveland just kept going and going and going, and eventually they end up getting the W uh, for the Cavs. Davin Mitchell gave you 37, 7, and 4, shot 12 for 23, 7 for 13 from three. He's really been lining up the last couple games, where in the first few games of the season, he didn't really need to do too much because everyone was going but now you know donovan really has stepped up the last few games darius garland gave you 29 and 9 24 and 10 for jared allen Karis Levert was big 22 and 8 off the bench especially with evan mobley not playing in this game george nanny who started this game for evan mobley gave you 14 points hit four three pointers the team shot 54 percent for the field he hit 21 threes shot 48 percent from three he also won the free throw battle took four more free throws than chicago they won the rebounding battle 40 to 36 uh won the assist battle 33 to 32 Won the turnover battle 13 to 17. Just an amazing all around game for Cleveland. They're 14 0. Not much more to say. I mean, they've been absolutely dominant for the Bulls. A really good offensive game for them. You know, Kobe White gave you 29, hit six threes. Vucevic had 25 and eight. He's actually been really good this season. Patrick Williams has 17 and nine assists. He had four threes. Io had 15, but just, I mean, Josh Giddy didn't really do much. He was a minus 27, only played 15 minutes. Sacklin also had a really rough game, four for 16, had five fouls, had eight points. It was really tough for him. And in the fourth quarter, I mean, they just could not really stop. They couldn't get any stops in the fourth, and the shots just didn't start to, you know, not fall in the fourth quarter. And that's when Cleveland went on their run. They're 14-0. They're really good. Not much more to say. I mean, I met this Cavalier team that hasn't been set already. I mean, they've been absolutely amazing, and now it's just like, all right, you know, how, how long is this going to keep going for? How long can we get? How long can we go? <laughs> Next, we have Lakers, Spurs. Lakers win this one 120 to 115. They are 8 and 4. The Spurs fall to 6 and 7. Anthony Davis, dominating for the first half, dropped 26 points on 9 15 shooting. He was absolutely incredible. Wemby had 16 in the first half. Stephon Castle had 15 in the first half. Lakers held a pretty comfortable lead after San Antonio came out hot. I mean, Wemby had 9 in the first quarter. Spurs came out hot, but the Lakers settled in, were playing really good. The Spurs defense just couldn't hold up. Uh, the three-point shot was starting to fall. For the Lakers, he had five threes in the second quarter. Don't connect starting in this game. You know, hit a couple of shots. Max Christie made some good moments in this game. LeBron has seven assists in the quarter. Austin Reeves was hitting his shots. You know, it was like, yeah, but the Spurs, credit to the Spurs, they always had a way to come back. Well, every time I thought the Lakers could have punched them in the ma in the mouth and really took this lead up, the Spurs always had a comeback. The Spurs always, they were down eight or nine, but then they always made it back to like a two, three-point game. But then the Lakers came back with their own, you know, Lakers held it off all the time. Held off, held off, held off. Then we get to the fourth. The Spurs actually take the lead. You know, Devin Vassell hitting some shots. Stephon Castle had a big, like, layup at the rim on LeBron. Chris Paul hit some shots. Kelvin Johnson hit some shots. And it was like, man, are the Spurs actually going to, you know, come back and do this? But then Anthony Davis and LeBron James. You know, Anthony Davis had 10 points in the fourth. He had two huge three-pointers. You know, Gabe Vincent hit a big three-pointer. Austin Reeves hit one. D'Lo hit one. And LeBron cutting to the rim. Got the layup. And the Lakers end up getting the WAD 40 and 12, shot 14 for 26. He was absolutely incredible in this game. LeBron, his fourth straight triple double. Surprising enough, the first time in his career he's had four straight triple doubles coming at age 39, you know? Uh, 15, 16, and 12 in this game. Didn't really need to score too much. You know, he was rebounding and was just making plays for others, you know, doing what he did 
best. Uh, Austin Reeves gave you 19 and 6 assists with 5 threes. Dal Connect in his first start gave you 14. Dilo with 13 off the bench. Max Christie was great in this game. 11 points. Was a plus 23. Playing some great defensive plays. Uh, Lakers shot 50% for the field. 45% from three. Got to the free throw line more times than San Antonio. Won the rebounding battle very slightly. Um, won the turnover battle very slightly as well. But AD and LeBron just dominating. I mean, Anthony Davis has been absolutely amazing this season. Uh, credit to the Spurs, though. Again, the Spurs, you know, kept in it. You know, the Lakers never ran away with this game when they probably could have. The Spurs always kept it very close. Wemby dropped 28, 14, and 5. Uh, Stephon Castle had a great game, 22 and 5 assists, shot 7 for 12. He had three threes. He was amazing in this game. You know, just so many big shots, big threes, you know, cuts to the rim. Like, he he was great. It was, it was great to watch Stephon Castle out there, ball out with, on LeBron and AD and on ESPN. You know, he's been really, really solid so far for the Spurs this year. Den Vassell gave you 15, 12 for Kelvin Johnson, 11 and 11 for Chris Paul, 10 for Julian Champagne. Uh, they had a really solid game, too. It's just, you know, at the end of the day, they just could not really, they didn't have an answer for LeBron and AD, really. They just didn't have enough firepower for LeBron and AD, which is okay. You know, the Spurs have gone, Spurs start off the year a little bit rough, but the last couple of games, they've really started to kind of figure it out. You know, of course, a lot of that is credit to Wemby, starting to hit their shots and starting to, you know, fire. But also, Chris Paul has looked a lot more comfortable this season. They're getting a lot more production from guys like Stephon Castle, Champagne, Vassell is now back. Kellen Joss has been solid in the last couple games. So they're getting a lot more production from everybody else as well. And they're actually have looked like a pretty solid competent team. I mean, they're only one game under 500, which is really, really nice for the Spurs. But for the Lakers, just the LeBron and AD show, and then also getting some production from Austin Reeves, Connect, Matt Christie. You know, they're starting to pick it up a little bit after going on a little bit. They started off hot, won a cold streak, and now they're finally starting to really kind of, you know, climb back up. Next, we have the Nets and the Knicks. The Knicks win this one 124 122 thanks to Jalen Brunson, the Brunson burner, hitting the big shot. Uh, Brooklyn came out with a really nice first quarter. Cam Thomas dropped 19 points on 7 for 7 shooting in the first quarter. He was on it from the get go. The second and third quarter, the Knicks kind of took back the lead without Conflict Towns in this game as well. Uh, Jalen Brunson had nine in the quarter. Mikhail had seven in the second quarter. Then the third quarter, the Knicks, you know, took a little bit more of a gap. OG had nine in the quarter. Mikhail Bridges had eight. You know, Ariel Hawk Porty had some really good moments throughout this entire game. Uh, but then we get to the fourth quarter, the Nets put up 40 points in the fourth quarter. Cam Thomas had 12. Cam Johnson had 10. You know, Zaire Williams had six. Finney Smith had, um, or Cy Williams had seven. Finney Smith had six. Schroeder hit a big three pointer. Uh, but the Knicks, Jalen Brunson. Jalen Brunson was it. 16 points in the fourth quarter, including the game winning shot. Uh, I think on that wing three pointer was just huge. And the Net Knicks end up getting a win. They are six and six. Brooklyn falls to five and eight. Jalen Brunson, 37 points, seven assists, shot 12 for 20. This, the, I think this is like has been the first real, like, superstar performance of Jalen Brunson this year. Like Jalen Brunson has been good. He hasn't been bad at all. I'm not saying that. But he just hasn't he has he look he hasn't been all NBA Jalen Brunson this year. You know, he hasn't had any big performances, any big time performances because Cat has been, you know, great and he's been kinda Jalen Brunson's been kinda chilling a little bit. But without Cat, he finally had his first big real like MVP all NBA type performance. I mean he was on it from the get go. You know, looking like the old Jalen Brunson, getting to the free throw line, hitting big shots, getting to the rim, doing Jalen Brunson's things in that that three pointer, just sealing the game right there. OG also had a really nice game, twenty five and eight. Mikhail gave you twenty two five and four. Uh, Cameron Payne at ten off the bench. Josh Hart fourteen nine to nine. Airlock Porty also good moments, four blocks, seven points in this one. And the Knicks, they got stops when you needed to. You know, they were guarding up on Cam Thomas, even though Cam Thomas shot forty three points on sixteen for twenty two shooting, he was incredible. Um, but also in the fourth quarter, Cam Thomas, you definitely know. You could tell he was trying to get his own. You could tell he was definitely trying to be like, all right, I'm winning this game for this team. You know, which I, I I can't really blame him too much for it. But just the Knicks really were, you know, you know, suffocating him in that fourth quarter. Cam Johnson gave you 17 points, 15 for Dwayne Finn Smith, 14 for Dennis Schroeder. And the Nets are kind of falling back a little bit. They lost a couple games in a row, which makes sense. You know, they're still a very competent team, though. They still are going to be very competent until they probably trade their people at the trade deadline. But Cam Thomas really nice to... Him for sh to show out, you know, I like, I really love watching Cam Thomas get buckets. And last night was an amazing game for him. But the Knicks, Jalen Brunson having an amazing performance, and they get a big W, especially without Carthony Towns. That's a great W to get without Cat. Next, we have Clippers, Rockets. Rockets end up winning this game 125 104. The Rockets are 9 and 4, while the Clippers dropped to 6 and 7. Uh, the Rockets just had a dominant first half, led by 20 at the end of the f first half. Um, first quarter, everybody. 
You know, they shot 47%. Their defense was really good. They held the Clippers 38% shooting. Second quarter, they outscored them by 12. Jabari Smith had 14 points. He had, I think, what, 19? I think, or 21? 19 in the first half. Uh, Fred Van Vliet, 8 in the quarter. A man had 7. You know, just an amazing game. And the Cl- Rockets just dominated this one. Jabari Smith Jr., t- 28 and 11. 5 for 8 from 3. 11 for 17 from the field was a plus 31. A great game from him. Really encouraging game from him as well. Fred Van Vliet gave you 18, 7, and 10. 17 for Dylan Brooks. Alper Shangun or triple double. 16, 10, and 10 on plus 38. He was amazing, dominating this paint. And then Tar Eason gave you 17 and 6. And men had 12. We still need a nickname. I don't know. Is there a nickname yet for a man, a Thompson, and Tar Eason? Because they deserve one. If there is, let me know, please. Because we need to find out this nickname for this tandem. Because, I mean, I talked about it yesterday in my Interrated Players video. I had Tar Eason in there and how he's been great. But him and a man, that duo is just, you know, there has been one of the better duos in the league, surprisingly. But yeah, even, I mean, without Jalen Green, I mean, Jalen Green had a really rough game, only eight points. Four for 11 was a plus zero. They still end up dominating this game. You know, it just shows the depth of this Rocket team. Everything was clicking. Jabari was hitting shots. Van Fleet was doing his thing. Dylan Brooks was hitting shots. He had five threes. Shangun playmaking for others and getting his own. A man in Tar East coming off the bench and, you know, bringing that energy. It was just everything going for the Rockets. And now they're nine and four and they're playing some really good basketball, man. I mean, they're not, I mean, they're sitting at number three in the West. <laughs> they're sitting, at, they're only behind the Thunder and the Warriors. I mean, that is so impressive this year i mean it just it feels like they've just really every game it feels like they're getting better and better and it feels like they're maturing every game like you see it like at first they didn't close out games now they learn to close out games now it's like all right now they know their tendencies now they know all right shingun is getting better jabari smith is getting better Van fleet is getting better and men and tari eason are becoming a duo forming synergy like it just feels like every game it's just there's one little thing that's you know improving for this rocket team over and over and as each game goes on, it's getting better and better and better. And it just, those little things like that are going to make such differences throughout the rest of the season. So it's really, really fun and nice to see this Rocket team really come out and start playing amazing basketball together. And now they're one of the better teams in the NBA, record-wise. I mean, it's, it's just really fun to watch. Can't wait to see the rest of them moving forward. Clippers, really tough shooting performance, 37%, 25% from three. Um yeah, just really, really tough for them. Their defense has kind of calmed down a little bit. Norman Powell had a really tough game. Um, Harden was 7 for 14, 21 points. No one else can really do much um, on the court. And, uh, yeah, they're kind of starting to come back down to earth a little bit. They're down to 6 and 7. Uh, still really solid. Still a really solid team. It's just, you know, they, things are starting to – I mean, they had a really hot start. Really hot start. A lot of their players have really hot starts. They're starting to come down to earth a little bit. But, you know, it's fine. I guess that's, that's fine. But this is more about the Houston Rockets and say how – Great the Houston Rockets have been so far this season. Next are Nuggets, Pelicans. Pelicans end up winning this one 101-94. They are 4-9. They end their losing skid. Denver also ends their winning skid at 7-4. Nicole Jokic did not play in this game, you know, which was as obviously a huge in this game. And the Pelicans came out high early. I mean, they put up 32 in the first quarter. The Pelicans did B.I. at 30 at 13 in the first quarter, 3-for-3 three three from 3. He was on it while the Nuggets took some time to settle in. They did settle in. You know, Michael Porter Jr. had a really good second quarter. 14 points. He was 5 for 5, 4 for 4 from 3. You know, made it a closer game. Uh, third quarter was really rough for both sides. Both sides shot under 26% on the field. It was it was really rough that third quarter. But then we get to the fourth quarter, and that's when the Pelicans really, you know, start to light it up. You know, John T. Green had 7 in the quarter. B.I. had five, had 4. Brandon Boss had 5 and 3 assists. Jalen Noel had a 3-pointer. And the Nuggets just didn't have that consistency. You know, when you have Nicole Jokic, it's just a consistency in the fourth quarter where Jokic is like, all right, I'm going to get this bucket, and we're going to be good. They didn't have that in this game. You know, Jamal had nine. Christian Brown had four. You know, Westbrook hit a three-pointer, but it was like, man, like, we just they didn't have any consistency at all throughout this entire game, really. And that was big, obviously, in the Pelicans. And we're getting a win, a much-needed victory. B.I., 29-9-7. and seven. Brandon Boston gave you 19-4-4. Four four. He has had some really good moments this season. Trey Murphy had 17, 12 rebounds for Eves Missy in this one as well. Um, yeah, and then for Denver, MPJ give you 24. Jamal had 16, 6, and 8. Uh, 18 for Payne Watson, 18 and 5. 15 for Christian Brown. But again, without Nicole Jokic, it's just it's going to be really tough to win games. You know what I mean? It's going to be really, really tough to win games. Um, it's just not something that happens often. There's a personal reason, so hopefully everything is fine with Nicole Jokic and anything around him. Hopefully it's not something that's super serious and he's going to miss more games. But uh, yeah, I mean, there's not really much to say. I mean, without Jokic, it's just really tough for the Denver Nuggets to win games at all. Obviously, when you don't have the MVP of the league, you're not going to be as good as 
you know, you usually are. But good shot for the Pelicans for not letting this one slip away. Because there's definitely some times where I thought I was going to slip away a little bit. But New Orleans just kept it going. B.I. kept on the gas. You know, got some good things from some of their players at some certain points throughout the game. A big three-pointer, a big shot, or a big defensive stop here and there. And that made the big difference in the end. So, shout out to the Pelicans for finally getting a W. Next, we have Suns Thunder. Thunder dominating this game, winning 99-83. to They are 11-2. The Suns are 9-4. The Suns have lost a couple games in a row without Kevin Durant. Um, from the get-go, Thunder just put it on them. You know, Shea had 9 in the first quarter. J-Dub had 6. But really, it was a defense. The Suns shot 3-21 for 21 in the first quarter. Uh, Devin Booker did not score in the first quarter. Did not score in the first half of this game without Kevin Durant. Bradley Beal also did not play in this game, which is big. And... Devin Booker was in the torture chamber. I mean, Lou Dort, the torture chamber. Well, Devin Booker was the next victim, unfortunately. And Thunder just dominated the rest of this game, 99-83. to Wasn't a great offensive game for both sides, but the Suns' offensive game was just way more horrible than Thunder. Uh, Shea finished with 28-6-4. Lou Dort had 15-9, 14 for J-Dub, 11 for Isaiah Joe. The, the Suns shot 29% from the field, 24% from three. Uh, missed 10 free throws. Lost the rebounding battle. Lost the assist battle, lost the turnover battle. It was just a horrible offensive display for the Phoenix Suns. I mean, Josh Okogie was their leading scorer with 15 points. Uh, Devin Booker dropped 12 points, was 2 for 10, minus 29. Royce O'Neal had 11 points. Uh, it, it was really bad. It was really tough to watch this Phoenix Suns team. Uh, Devin Booker, just, yeah, a really tough performance for him. And, uh, yeah, I don't really know what else to say in this game. I mean, it was just a horrible offensive game for the Phoenix Suns. It, it was horrible. I mean, twenty nine percent from the field. They only hit. They made twenty two shots in this game. They they made they made twenty two field goals in this game. De'Aaron Fox hit twenty two field goals by himself last night. Think about that for a second. That's that that just really shows you how bad the Phoenix Suns offense was last night. Uh, I saw a lot of people on the timeline, Suns fans, you know, kind of worrying about Devin Booker a little bit. He hasn't had a, an amazing season. I mean, he's still giving you twenty two, three and six. He's having his worst efficiency season since like his rookie season. But I mean, I it's Devin Booker. I'm not worried about him all. Devin Booker can come out tomorrow and have forty and then all of a sudden it's like, oh, okay, here's Devin Booker. You know, so I should you should not worry about Devin Booker at all. I think he's okay. You know, he it just he, he just needs a couple games to really get himself going, I guess. I don't know. But I, I would not be concerned about Devin Booker. You're also are missing Kevin Durant and Bradley Beal. You know, when you're out there with Chris Josh Kogi, Ryan Dunn and Yusuf Nurkic it's going to be tough to be a team, especially like the Oklahoma City Thunder, who have an elite defense. Uh, but, yeah, Thunder just really put on the defensive clinic last night, even without Chet Holmgren. It was just super, super impressive. And without Alex Caruso as well, just super, super impressive. Next, like, Timberwolves Kings. Timberwolves ended up winning this game in overtime, 130-126. What an amazing game to watch um, for a lot of different reasons in this one. Minnesota was just running away with this game early in the first half. They're up by only eight, but in the third quarter, you know, Ant had 10 in the quarter, and it kind of like Minnesota built a little bit of a lead. But then Sacramento, well, De'Aaron Fox said, no, I'm not allowing this to happen. And De'Aaron Fox went absolutely nuclear. 20 in the fourth quarter, 13 in the third quarter. Uh, he had, what, 33 points in the second half. Um, had, what, 57 or fi 54? I'm sorry, 54 through four quarters. Uh, they sent the game into overtime, and that's overtime. You know, he had six more points, but it was Anthony Edwards and Julius Randle. Julius Randle had that one lap, and then Anthony Edwards with the shot, the step-back three, a tough step-back three to seal this game. Um, a great performance. The Timberwolves ended up winning. You know, Anthony Edwards gave you 36-5-2, and two, so that's 6-14 from three. Julius Randle had 26-4-5, and five, but they got some production from the others. I mean, Jane McDaniels had 14-6. and six. Mike Conley had a good game, four threes, 14-4-7 and seven with five steals. Nas Reed gave you 16. Nikhil gave you 10. Rudy gave you 11-11 with three blocks. So finally having a good game. I mean, Minnesota has been very up and down this season. Uh, the defense has not been as great as we've known it. You know, the defense has not really been there as elite as, as it was last year. And they just, guys like Jane, I feel like Jane McDaniels and Mike Conley have been really big factors. You know, Jane McDaniels and Mike Conley have not just, just haven't had really the same seasons as they did last year. You know, like Jane McDaniels, I mean, he fouled out in this game. Jane McDaniels, I mean, statistically, is having kind of, I guess, the same season, but he's also only shooting 29% from three and just hasn't really been as amazing as he was last year. Mike Conley, I mean, the ages, I mean, he is 37 years old, so it's really tough to try to rely on a 37-year-old to really come out and, you know, dominate unless you're, like, one of the one of the greats. 
But Mike Conley also has not had a really good season. I mean, he's shooting 32% from three compared to last year. He shot 44% from three. He's shooting a clear worst. I mean, this is worst efficiency season ever. This is worst efficiency season ever, you know? So, I mean, those two, I feel like, have been big keys and why the Timberwolves have not looked as super good or consistent. I mean, Jay Daniels is your wing stopper and a guy that you rely on to, you know, help a little bit in the offensive end. Mike Conley is your table setting, your point guard. You know, you're consistent, you know, your rock. Mike Conley is supposed to be the rock. You know, your your steady point guard. Like, if you can't line anything else, at least Mike Conley is going to come out and play, give some good minutes. But they haven't really been doing that this year. Last night, they both had some solid games, and they got the win. You know, especially thanks to Ant and G. Lewis Randall. But De'Aaron Fox, man. De'Aaron Fox, absolutely incredible. 60 points, 7 assists, 22 for 35, 6 for 10 from 3, 10 for 11 from the regional line. The new Kings franchise record most points in a game. The first 60-piece this season. And they lose, and they lose, man, and they lose. They didn't have them. They did not have Demar. No Demar Derozan in this game. Um, man, 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 it, it was so tough to say De'Aaron play. Also, Malik Monk also is gonna be out for a little while. But it's so it was so so rough and tough to see De'Aaron do that, and it comes into nothing. I mean, it turns into a loss. But, I mean, he was so, I mean, even though they did, they did lose, by the end of the day, you still have to just marvel at that performance that De'Aaron Fox gave, man. I mean, literally, he just got anything he wanted. Like, when he was getting to the pick and rolls, like, there, he was getting to the rim and doing whatever he wanted. A floater, sure. He wanted to do a layup, yeah. He wanted a dunk, sure. Three-pointer, you know, I'll take a three, sure. You know, I'll get to the free throw line. Like, it just felt like any time he wanted something, he was like, you know what? Yeah, we'll do it this this time. And it worked. Uh, he was absolutely incredible. Uh, fortunately, they couldn't really get, I mean, Devonis had 23 and 12. Keegan gave you 14. But yeah, Kevin Herter had just four points. The bench did not really provide anything. Um, it, it was really, it was really literally just De'Aaron Fox out there doing everything. And almost got the win. But unfortunately, the Kings also this season have just not been a team that's been liable to, you know, you can't trust them to get a stop. You can't trust them when you need a stop. You, they just haven't been able to get it this season. And it happened again last night with the Julius Randle. And then Anthony Edwards, I mean, that wasn't a bad defense. That was just Anthony Edwards being Anthony Edwards, and that was just a really tough shot that you kind of have to be like, well, he hit that shot. You know what I mean? But, yeah, I mean, just an insane De'Aaron performance and as well. I mean, that duo was amazing. But the Timberwolves had him getting the last laugh in the end and ended up getting a W. In the final game of the night, we had Grizzlies, Warriors. The Warriors ended up getting a W, 123-118. They are 10-2. and two. Memphis drops to 7-6. and six. Warriors playing a really good all-around team game. I mean, their leading scorer was Buddy Hill at 18, but they had six players scoring double figures. Shot 44% from the field, 41% from three. The defense was amazing in this game as well. Um, the third quarter was a big factor. I scored them 38-30. to 30. They shot 60% from the field in the third quarter. Uh, Trace Jackson Davis had eight. Steph and Draymond both had six. Both hit two threes. Wiggins had four. Buddy Hill had five. Brzezemski had five. It was a I man Minnesota. I mean, sorry, Memphis. 39% for the field, 0 for 7 from 3. They did hit 16 free throws in the third quarter, which is how they stayed afloat. But then, yeah. But then the fourth quarter, I mean, they made it a little bit interesting. They put up 40 in the fourth quarter. Jaron had 11. Jalen Wills had 10. Desmond Bain, who returned in this game off the bench, had 8 points in the quarter. But it was just, you know, Golden State really couldn't. I mean, they just didn't have enough time left. You know, Golden State ends up getting the W. Uh, Buddy Hill give you 18. 14 for Moses Moody. Hit three threes. He's been really solid in his minutes. Uh, Steph, Dre, and Wiggins all had 13. 11 for Brandon Pajemski. 11, 7, and 5, to be more specific. Uh, Draymond had a really nice performance. Steph was doing Steph things, even though he didn't really. He only took nine shots in this game. Yeah, he was super, super impactful and effective. Um, they shot 41% of the three from three. Held Memphis to... Memphis was 7 for 42 from three. 16%. You know, so... Tough. They also won the rebounding battle, fifty six to fifty four. Won the assist battle, thirty three to twenty two. A really nice performance from the Warriors. All around team performance, team effort, team defense, and they end up getting a big or well, uh, yeah, really nice W for the Warriors. The Grizzlies. I mean, without John Morant, it's gonna be tough to win. You know, uh, exciting. They did get you know Desmond Bain and Vince Williams back yesterday. So that's a really nice sign. Uh, Jaron gave you 32 points. Jaron has been really nice. Jaron has been, you know, really consistent and really good. Desmond in his first game back gave you 18 points. Zach Eady had 14 and 9. Jalen Wells has 16 points. But, I mean, yeah, tough game for Scottie Pippen Jr. Aldama, Brandon Clark, two other starters, only played 15 and 12 minutes. Uh, Marcus Small, he had, nine, had, you know, 9 and 19 minutes. He also came off the bench. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's tough without Ja, obviously. But once Ja comes back, which they say maybe. Back tomorrow against, uh, I think they play Indiana tomorrow. 
maybe, which would be really nice. We get the full gang together. Uh, but the Warriors just been playing some amazing basketball, 10-2. They're balling right now. The defense has been there. Offensively, it's just been a team effort. And it's just, you know, the, the system. The system has been just incredible so far this year for Golden State. But yeah, it's going to be it for today. Hope you guys enjoyed. Once again, if you do like the content around here, consider subscribing, like, turn notifications, do all stuff like that. I'd really appreciate it. It really helps out a lot. Uh, once again, we're almost we're very, very close to 800 subscribers. So if you do like the content, hit the subscribe button. would mean a whole lot. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys tomorrow.